Hello and welcome to HITC Sport and the Premier League is back. After only being off for what seems like 10 minutes, England's top flight returns this weekend, which also means the return of fantasy football. As always, there's going to be a HITC Fantasy League on the official Premier League website, so if you want to join and most likely beat me and my team, aka Giroud Sandstorm, then the entry code is 74OCXW. Some of you may already be in the league as I just renewed last season, so check it out. But before it all kicks off, I'm going to give you a hand, which might be rich coming from the guy who didn't win last season's league. It would be like Joe Linton telling you how to score goals, or Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood telling you how to follow quarantine rules instead of picking up girls. Anyway, here we go, here is one player you should pick and one player you should avoid from every Premier League club. Arsenal pick Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. It's an obvious one, but why wouldn't you pick Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang? I was hardly going to say Granit Xhaka, was I? If you could pick any player in the game, the Arsenal skip would be top of most people's list. He's a striker that's listed as a midfielder, which means he gets more points for scoring goals, and he even gets an extra point on the rare occasion that the Gunners keep a clean sheet. Avoid Mesut Ozil. Another obvious one, but why spend £7 million of your own virtual money on a man who isn't going to play? For all his talent, he can't win your points on the bench, so you'd be crazy to pick the German international. Unless you know something I don't, and Arteta's ready to give him another go. Aston Villa, pick Oya Nyland. Other than the obvious of Jack Grealish, I'm not really sure who to suggest for Aston Villa. But as it stands, they yet to sign a goalkeeper, meaning Oyan Nyland will be in between the sticks when the season kicks off. But even if Villa do sign a goalkeeper, he's only valued at 4 million, so he's a great backup option if you're looking to save a few quid. Avoid Yotta. I don't know why you'd pick Yotta, but if you're thinking about it, don't. I've got no idea why he's valued at 6 million pounds, but that's far too much for a player who only got 17 points last season. You can get John McGinn for less, and he got nearly five times as many points. Brighton pick Matthew Ryan. While Nyland might just be a backup option for your team, Matty Ryan is more than a sound choice to be your number one. The Aussie stopper was Brighton's top point scorer last season on 135, and for £4.5 million, he's a lot cheaper than most goalkeepers this year. Avoid Adam Lallana. While he may be Brighton's marquee rival so far this summer, I don't think Adam Lallana is worth including in your team. There's no guarantee he'll really find the form he wants at Liverpool and Southampton, and there's always the chance he might get injured again. I hope he hits the ground running and does well for Brighton, but for £6.5 million I don't think I'll take the risk. Cheap plug, if you're a fan of Scottish football, particularly Scottish football that doesn't include Celtic or Rangers, then check out the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. They're a great set of lads who know everything there is to know about football north of the border. There's a link in the description below, it'd be great if you could check them out. Anyway, Burnley, pick Chris Wood. Picking forwards in fantasy football can be tricky, but I don't think you can go wrong with Chris Wood as your second striker. If he gets on a run, he'll score most weeks, which is exactly what you want from a striker. To be fair, there's quite a few people you could pick from Burnley who'll do a job in fantasy football. Many defenders though, of course. Avoid Johan Berg Goodmanson. Back after a long-term injury, £5.5 million pounds Johan Berg Goodmanson is a player I'd maybe pass on to begin with. After so long out injured, who knows what he'll be like on his return, or if he'll even be in the Burnley team. If you're a fan of the Icelandic winger, maybe give it a few weeks or so to see how he gets on before taking the plunge. Chelsea pick Kai Havertz. If he's anything like he was at Bayer Leverkusen, then you've got to have Kai Havertz in your fantasy team. The German superstar gets goals and assists, and at 8.5 million pounds he's one of the cheaper elite midfielders on the game. I don't think it'll take him any time to settle, so blame me if he's in your team and sitting on about 6 points after 3 weeks. Avoid Ruben Loftus-Cheek. All of Chelsea's new signs look great, the only issue is it might impact the young players who were finally getting a chance last season. Ruben Loftus-Cheek missed a lot of football due to injuries that didn't cement his place in the team, so for £6 million I wouldn't bother putting him in your fantasy squad as he might not even get in Lampards. Crystal Palace pick Eberichieza. If you're looking to pick someone from Palace, I reckon the new man Eberichieza is worth a punt. He was wonderful in the championship in a pretty uninspiring QPR team, so maybe in the Premier League alongside Wilfried Zaha he can be just as successful. For £6 million, I'm going to take a punt. Avoid Andros Townsend. He admitted he didn't have the best season last time out, and because of that he's not getting in my team. Sure he can bang the occasional one in the top corner when he cuts it on his left foot like he's a prime eye in Robin, but for the most of last season he's more like Robin a living. I'll see myself out. Everton pick Hamas Rodriguez. Come on, you've got to pick Hamas Rodriguez. It's Hamas Rodriguez playing for Everton. What could possibly go wrong? I'm not even sure how much he's worth on the game, but simply for the nostalgia of the 2014 World Cup and that screaming volley, he's worth a shot. Avoid Gilfie Sigurdsson. The Icelandic playmaker's best days are behind him, and that's why Carlo Ancelotti's basically signing an entire new midfield. 
In years gone by, he was a great pick with his free kicks and wonder goals, but in 2020, I won't be going anywhere near Gylfi Sigurdsson. Fulham pick Alexander Mitrovic. For 6 million quid, I think Alexander Mitrovic will be in most people's teams this year. He's Fulham's talisman, scored a bucket load of goals in the championship last time out, and he's proven on occasion that he can do it in the Premier League as well. Sure, he's partial to the odd red card or nothing performance, but who here can really say they've never had an urge to just elbow someone in the head? Avoid Tom Kearney. I just don't think he'll win you any points. He's a tidy footballer, but that doesn't mean anything on fantasy football. I like him as a player, but he'd be an absolute waste on fantasy footy. Leeds United pick Rodrigo. I think this guy's an excellent signer for Leeds, which is why I think he should be in your fantasy team. Bielsa's side create loads of chances, and now they've finally got someone who can put them away. Avoid Patrick Bamford. Speaking of chances being put away, you've got a feel for Patrick Bamford, don't you? Poor bloke's been ripped to bits here, there and everywhere, despite doing everything Bielsa wants from him other than putting the ball on the back of the net. But then again, hard work isn't going to get you points, so don't waste your time having Bamford in your team. Leicester City pick Jamie Vardy. I mean, he was the Premier League Golden Boot winner, what more do you want? Avoid Ayose Perez. I thought Ayose Perez would be great last season for Leicester, and at times he was. But then others, he looked so woeful you wanted to report Newcastle to the police for robbing the Foxes of 30 million. Behind closed doors, Perez featured less and less under Rodgers, so maybe you should take the hint too and keep him out of your team. Liverpool pick Joe Gomez. Okay, loads of Liverpool players will do your job. Mane, Salah, Trent, Van Dijk, Robertson, they're all going to get your hods of points. But if you want more of a bargain, then go for Joe Gomez. He likely to play every week, you get a clean sheet just like the rest of them, and he's only valued at 5.5 million. Avoid Jordan Shakiri. Sure, he's had a hair transplant and has massive calves, but that's not going to win you any points, is it? The assist midfield is valued at 6.5 million, and there's literally no reason you'd spend that much on him, mainly because he won't play. Man City pick Phil Foden. With David Silva gone, Phil Foden's going to get more minutes in a City shirt, and as he showed at the end of last season, there's no doubt he's going to thrive as one of City's main men. Sure, he might not play every week, but when he does, he'll at least get you a goal or an assist. Avoid Alexander Zinchenko. I think the ship for Zinchenko being City's main left back sailed. He makes too many mistakes, and with Mendy fit and Cancelo Cato play on the left as well, I think he should steer clear of the De Bruyne doppelganger. Man United pick Bruno Fernandes. Another big name, but a player you simply just have to have in your team. You can call him a penalty merchant or whatever you want, but I know the main reason I did so well in the second half of last season was because this man was in my team. He always contributes, and he'll always win you multiple points. Avoid Dean Henderson. Valued the same as De Gea, which is a surprise, we don't know who'll be my United's number one this season, so for that reason, I wouldn't bother picking either of them. It's as simple as that. Newcastle pick Callum Wilson. I just think this is a brilliant signing by the Magpies, and I can see him getting a fair few goals. They've got the players to create chances, and now they've finally got someone who can put them away as well. Avoid Joe Linton. There's just no point picking him. There's better players available for 6 million, and even if he does play, he likely won't be an out and out striker, so he isn't going to get the goals needed to win you any points. Sheffield United pick Aaron Ramsdale. He was great at Bournemouth last season, and he'll win you even more points this season he's actually got a half decent defence in front of him. Assuming Sheffield United are as solid as they were last season, I can see Ramsdale being a lot of people's first choice stopper. Avoid John Lundstrom. He was the fantasy football king last season, but this year I'm going nowhere near him. Last time he was a goal scoring midfielder listed as a defender, meaning he got extra points for his goals as well as clean sheet points despite him playing mainly in attack instead of defence. But now he's listed as a midfielder, so what's the point really? Southampton pick Danny Ings. If he's as good as he was last year, then Danny Ings is a great choice of striker if you want to avoid the mega face for Aguero or Kane. Avoid Sofian Bufal. I mean, why is he even still at Southampton? The Moroccan is gifted but ineffective in the final third, so I'd be shocked if any of you picked him for your team. I mean, I don't think this will be his breakout year in the Premier League. There's more chance of chunks bagging Maya Jama. Spurs pick Matt Doherty. Sure, he won't be playing in a back five like at Wolves, but if his role is the same as Serge Aurier's, then he's still going to get a huge license to roam forward and play as a winger. He might not be as good as he was for Wolves, but I'd still be inclined to include him in my team. Avoid Hugo Lloris. In the words of Danny Rose, Tottenham's defence is shit, so they're not going to keep any clean sheets, which means there's no point having Hugo Lloris. End of. West Brom pick Grady Diangana. The signing that caused controversy in the West Ham ranks, Dean Garner will be out to prove they should never have sold him, and that West Brom will right to invest. If you can take his form from the Championship, he might be a decent addition to your team for 5.5 million. Avoid Semi Ajayi. It's hard to pick anyone from West Brom as they're all kind of cheap, so there's few risks. 
but Ajayi looks like the only defender worth more than 4.5 million, and I don't really see what he brings to be worth the extra pennies. West Ham pick Thomas Suchek. Signed in January, Thomas Suchek was one of the saving graces of West Ham's season, and the Czech midfielder actually proved to be something of a goal threat. If you've only got 5 million to spend, then I'd definitely go with him. Avoid Felipe Anderson. The Brazilian was pretty ineffective at times last season, despite being a great fancy football pick the year prior. He's got all the talent, but at the start of the season I wouldn't bother taking the risk, especially when you get Phil Foden for the same price. Wolves pick Raul Jimenez. The man got nearly 200 points last season, so it's hard to see anyone else, isn't it? He gets so many goals, and he can create them as well. If Wolves are on form, then Jimenez is a great striker to have. Avoid Johnny Otto. While he's got hundreds of points in the past two seasons, don't touch him this time out as the poor bugger's crocked after getting a horrible injury in the Europa League. Get well soon Johnny, I know you're watching. Ok, so that's one player to pick and one to avoid from every Premier League club in fantasy football this season. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to HITC Sport. And until next time, we'll see you around.